So today I'm going to make for you my meatloaf that I've been making for my kids since they were little. They're grown adults now. Jeff said he doesn't like meatloaf, but he's going to love this. I promise. So the only difference with this meatloaf today is I'm making it on the pit boss versus making it in the oven that I've done for years. So I hope you stay with me because it's going to be a lot of fun. I've got my burner on. It's set about medium to medium high. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil, maybe a tablespoon or so. We're going to let that heat up just a little bit. It won't take too long. All right, so what I have here is just some red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, green bell pepper, and some diced sweet onion. Um, maybe a half cup of each, okay? Of the pepper mixture, a half cup of pepper mixture, not each one, and a half cup of onions. So we're gonna pour that in. We're gonna get these guys browned up a little bit. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna add into this mixture, I've got about a tablespoon of oregano, um, which is dried already. And then I have a tablespoon of fresh basil and about a tablespoon of fresh thyme. So we're gonna get that in there too. And I just wanna mainly get these guys softened. All right, let them get kind of softened up. It also gets the herbs that I use more aromatic when you put them in here. I don't want them to be oily because I don't want any more oil in the meatloaf. So there's not a lot of oil in here. All right, so now you want to turn your burner down to low or to simmer. And you're going to put about kind of a heaping tablespoon of, I didn't get it all off, so there we go. But a heaping tablespoon of the tomato paste in. And you're gonna mix that into your vegetable mixture. Once they're completely softened and the tomato paste is mixed in, then we're going to Turn this off. We're gonna let it cool because it is gonna be mixed in with the meat. So I have a pound and a half of ground round here. My veggies have cooled down, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those in. And see if I can get them all out of the ramekin thing here. All right. I have two eggs that I'm gonna add in. And then these are Italian breadcrumbs and I soaked them in milk. Um, the reason why I did that is because it helps keep your meatloaf more moist. So I'm gonna throw that in there as well. Then I have some Parmesan cheese because I really like cheese a lot. So we're gonna sprinkle some Parmesan cheese in here. I'm gonna mix, start mixing it together and then I'm gonna add a couple more things, okay? So we're gonna smush this all together. All right, so for the breadcrumbs, I did about a cup of breadcrumbs and then I used milk until it was pretty saturated. And then it, it's been sitting for about an hour. Um, I would say it was probably equal parts. It was probably a cup of milk to a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm kind of bad about that. I don't always measure stuff. All right, so I have all this mixed in. Now I'm gonna add a few more things. Salt. Um, I'm not a huge salt person, so I probably don't put as much as a lot of people, but maybe a teaspoon. And it's up to you. If you want more, add more. I love pepper. So ground pepper. I'm going to put 
uh, more than a teaspoon. Probably two teaspoons because I really like pepper. Again, do that to your own taste. People don't, you know, if you don't like pepper as much as I do, don't add as much. I have some Dijon mustard. I like a little bit of Dijon mustard in here. It just gives it a little bit of a kick. That's probably maybe a teaspoon and a half. And then Worcestershire sauce. However you say it. <laughs> Again, I really like this flavor, so I might add a little bit more than you want to, but I do mm, at least three tablespoons. All right, now this is a little bit wet, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more Parmesan cheese. And with the Parmesan cheese, just do it like as much as you want. I would say I did a total of three tablespoons. All right, so the Parmesan cheese is in a five ounce container and I used almost half, so I'm kind of guesstimating on how much that is. All right, so once you have this all mixed together, then you're going to form it in a pan. So I have my standard size loaf pan right here and I'm going to kind of build my meatloaf in it, I guess, for lack of better words. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my meatloaf in here. And by the way, this loaf pan did spray it with some um, Pam so this won't stick, okay? Hopefully it won't stick, we'll see. All right, get that in there. And then, because like I said earlier, I really like cheese, I've got this whole block of, okay, I don't say this right, Jeff's gonna make fun of me. Quack, quackleberry cheese. <laughs> Quack or, quackleberry, whatever. It's, it's extra sharp cheese. We're gonna put that in the center, right? Because this is gonna be super cheesy and delicious. I'm gonna add more of the meatloaf to the top and get it all the way around. My cheese. All right, so I have a regular cookie sheet here, right? I'm going to use this wire rack, baking rack. I'm going to put it in side of here or on top of here. There we go. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you make meatloaf, there's a lot of extra grease from it. And if your meatloaf sits in it, it's going to be greasy and not very crispy and good. So do that so that juice can go down there and it won't be sitting on my meatloaf. All right, I've got my meatloaf pan. Okay, we're going to see how this works out here. We're going to Put it, oh, perfect. I'm going to kind of make it look pretty. Okay, and the cheese is all nice and covered up inside of there. So I think that's perfect. So it's time to get this guy seasoned up. We're gonna use this Arthur Bryant's and this is from a very famous Kansas City restaurant, right? So I'm gonna get this sprinkled on this guy. Do the front of him. I don't know why I call him a him. All right, there we go. Now, this is like the best part, right? I am going to put bacon around this guy. Because Jeff really likes bacon. So, Got our bacon and with this you have to be um pretty careful because it's got to kind of wrap around him otherwise it will curl up so you want to make sure that you get it kind of wrapped around a little bit it doesn't have to go all the way around him you don't have to try to lift it up as long as the bacon kind of tucks under so it doesn't curl back up all right, so we've got them going across this way. I am going to wrap it this way as well, just so I make sure that it is totally covered on the sides. And because Jeff really likes bacon.
All right, so now that the bacon's all around him, we're just put a little bit more of this Arthur Bryan seasoning on him. Get that all over the bacon. I'm not really worried if it goes in my pan there. All right, let's go ahead and get him in the pit boss. So we've got the pit boss set at 400. It's running about 385. Anywhere between 375 and 400 is good. Go ahead and shut this up. And we're gonna give him about an hour. It's been an hour and 20 minutes and the meatloaf is around 150. And to stay consistent with our rub, we're gonna use this Arthur Bryant's barbecue sauce. All right, so we're gonna get this guy glazed up. If that's a word. So for those of you that like a ketchup face on your meatloaf, you can see that this sauce, this barbecue sauce, has kind of a ketchup base. We're gonna close this guy up and we'll be back with you. It's been another 20 minutes. So it's been an hour and 50 minutes total. We're gonna go ahead and get this off and take it over there to cool down. So it's been resting 10 minutes. As you can see, the Arthur Bryant barbecue sauce gives it a really deep color. It's from that tomato base. And Jeff's here so he can cut it open. I always get called in for the cutting. Yeah. All right. It's got cheese in there, right? Yes. Lots of cheese. I like cheese. <laughs> I guess you want me to I do. open it up into the camera? I want you to open it up. Yep. Look at the cheese Ooh. ooze out. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. So look at all the cheesy goodness. It's going to be so good. Yeah, I don't have any fork. Oh, I know. We forgot to bring forks out, so right? You're going to have to be a finger tonight. That's okay. I'm good. I don't yeah. mind. It looks so yummy. There you go. You got some bacon <laughs> in there and some cheese. Okay. Let me get a little bacon, too. <laughs> you don't have any bacon. Yeah, I do. Right there. Let's do it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. All right. So I don't eat meatloaf. <laughs> it's delicious. And for those of you who are savvier than me, you'll just be silent. But I'm going <laughs> to tell her I would eat this meatloaf again, even though I don't like meatloaf. This is delicious. She's going to have a big head all night long now. It's really good. It is delicious. See Jeff's pretty flowers? He grew these. Oh my gosh. I know, right? How come if you've been making this all these years, you never made it for me before? Because you said you didn't like meatloaf, so you know. I don't think you, she likes <laughs> it very much. I all can right. eat this meatloaf. This is good. It is good. It's got a lot of good cheesiness. And bacon. All right, guys, so... Well, you know, Arthur Bryan's stuff is pretty dang good, too. It is. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, they probably don't want to watch us eat all day, so... All right, finish up. All right, guys, so if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell. Thanks for watching another video.